Do you have this prejudice? Well, to start, what is prejudice? Prejudice, or prejustice, is defined as a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or experience. This opinion is usually some sort of belief regarding the character or the moral status of different groups. Prejudice can result in the horrific treatment of groups who are perceived as lesser than. We don't need to look far into human history or even into the present to see how prejudice can result in violence against groups and how that violence can become embedded into the structure of society. So, do you have this prejudice? Are you prejudiced against animals? In other words, is it possible that the decisions you make which involve animals are based on an irrational perception of the consequences? If your answer is no, then I invite you to watch this video with an open mind. Even if you don't find these arguments convincing, we must understand that this is what we would expect someone to think were they in fact prejudiced against animals. If you could take one thing away from this video, let it be this quote from the philosopher Kwame Appiah in his essay, Racisms. Once someone has been offered evidence both that their reasoning in a certain domain is distorted by prejudice and that the distortions conform to a pattern that suggests a lack of impartiality, they ought to take special care in articulating views and proposing policies in that domain. They ought to do so because the phenomenon of partiality in judgment is well attested in human affairs. Even if you are not immediately persuaded that you are yourself a victim of such a distorted rationality, you should keep in mind that this is the usual position of those who suffer from such prejudices. In other words, the more someone has confidence in their ability to make reasonably good decisions which affect others, the more they should seek out information about the actual consequences of their decisions because people are confidently irrational all the time. So, do your decisions affect animals? Unfortunately, our society uses animals for many things. Animals are exploited for food, clothing, entertainment, and research in pretty much every single country in the world. What we need to realize is that we make decisions which affect humans as well, but we do so under a framework which grants humans basic moral rights. Some animals, those who are lucky enough to be born into a species we consider to be suitable for companionship, are afforded some protections, but the vast majority of animals are not. The vast majority of animals in our society aren't treated as individuals with unique perspectives on reality and experiences of the desire to avoid harm, they are measured by the market value of their bodies. They are forced by us to live lives that are so terrible, most of us can't even imagine what it would be like to experience. Can you imagine what it would be like to live your entire life and never be allowed any healthy social bonds with others? To have no freedom of movement or bodily autonomy? To be mutilated and neglected for months or years waiting for the cold end of slaughter? We can imagine what such a life might be like, but so long as we haven't actually directly experienced similar atrocities ourselves, we cannot truly understand the magnitude of that kind of suffering. If the consequences of our actions are so grave, they evade even our genuine attempts to comprehend them, how can we rationally make those decisions? Speciesism is the belief system, or ideology, in which the moral worth of others is determined by their membership in a species. Speciesism is analogous to other isms, where the moral worth of others is determined by other factors such as race, sex, social class, and so on. Some people think that it is offensive to compare the discrimination of humans with the discrimination of other animals, but it is only offensive to those who begin with the assumption that animals deserve less. The very meaning of the phrase treating people like animals loses its meaning when animals are treated well. In fact, once you accept that speciesism and other forms of discrimination are analogous, it becomes much easier to see the absurdity in the excuses people give for continuing to purchase and consume animal products. The most common rebuttals to the idea that animals should be afforded basic moral rights include it's natural to exploit animals, humans have always exploited animals, humans are superior to animals, animals can't feel pain, it is a social norm to exploit animals, not exploiting animals would harm the economy. All of these justifications can and have been used to justify human slavery. The reality of what we do to animals is so horrific that the absurd level of suffering cannot be tolerated by the average person. 
If you don't believe that, at least try and watch all of Dominion and see for sure. Carnism is a sub-ideology of speciesism that permits the consumption of the flesh and other substances of certain species. This consumption is maintained even though the average person doesn't hate animals or wish them to suffer, we simply never interact with the victims of this violent system as the conscious minds they are, and they rarely get the opportunity to plead to us their moral worth. A sociologist named Alan Johnson used the analogy of monopoly to describe social systems. The average person isn't hyper-competitive in real life, but when playing Monopoly, they are ruthless in bankrupting their opponents. That is because the behaviors of people are not just dependent on their personality, but also on the social systems they inhabit. We are conditioned from birth to consume animals. We are socialized to experience empathy for some animals, but never to question why we shouldn't extend that empathy to others. The survival of prejudice is dependent on being unquestioned and invisible by writing the rules of the game to favor certain paths. These are known as the paths of least resistance, and they are another way of describing social norms. Consuming animals and staying silent about their oppression is a path of least resistance, and that is why most people aren't vegan, despite being against animal abuse. While going along with this path is easier on a day-to-day -day basis, it comes at the cost of being unable to exercise natural empathetic capabilities towards others. Prejudice threatens autonomy, by allowing irrational beliefs to stick and ultimately result in consequences that are against one's values. Instead of being able to use the information we gain to change our behaviors, prejudice distorts the perception of the consequences of our own actions. It's very common for people to simply refuse to engage with these ideas rather than reconsidering their own position. These include the downplaying of one's use of animals, using humor to belittle the issue, claiming that the use of animals causes no more suffering than the alternatives, or simply avoiding the topic when it comes up. The ideology of carnism depends on shifting our attention away from the most raw facts of the conflict between our values and our behaviors. If someone genuinely values not causing harm to other conscious beings, and they have knowledge that their decisions harm animals, whether or not they continue to make those decisions really just comes down to how much they desire to live authentically to themselves. People overcome social pressure and become vegan when they develop an internal resistance, where choosing to exploit animals causes more internal conflict than energy is saved just going with the flow. This is how social justice movements happen. When people are passionate enough to go against the flow and push others to care as well, we create networks of social change. That is why, when we have an injustice like animal agriculture, where our decisions have clear victims and alternatives are accessible, we have a moral obligation to boycott animal products. Not only because a boycott of the system is necessary to align our values and behaviors, but also because doing so is a necessary part of a world where all beings are free from oppression.